tips do you have for, for networking? Think of the people who you want to be connecting to and what's the skill set that uh, you can bring them that would make them make you interesting to them. Hey, hey, TJ. Hey, I just wanted to ask you about the, how much preparation you put into all the stuff that you do. So, okay. um, for example, um, we all know uh, Kobe hit, hit the gym and he'd be putting hours in for oh, one game. You know, mm-hmm. he'd put in a thousand shots or something like that. So what is your equivalent, um, f- for example, for a video? Like how much preparation do you do? That sort of thing, you know. I think the challenge in answering that question is in basketball, it's pretty clearly defined what you need to do. You need to show mm-hmm. up every day and, and when you're playing, you have to you have to hit jump shots and you got to dribble and you got to study the offense and defense and do tape and hit the gym. Like there's only a certain number of things that you need to do when you're an entrepreneur. There's a million different things that you could be doing. And so it's, are you doing the right things? So what are you struggling with in terms of your preparation? Well, the one thing that I have been doing is, well, I started uh, an Instagram page for, um, for people that are dealing with mental health issues, basically to, um, help you take the first step in the right direction towards being your best self, right? And it's something that's very important to me because I've dealt with that at some point. And yeah. one of my challenges is, okay, how can I be the best at doing that? Like, how can I, um, uh, how can I make sure uh, I'm, you know, uh, always giving my best in terms of content, in terms of service and all that thing. And it's, it's very hard because it's very hard to, to quantify. It's very hard to, with basketball, you know, you're doing jump shots. And with something like this, it's very, you know, it's very hard, you know? So, so how, yeah. That's, how long ago were you at your lowest point in terms of self-confidence because of mental health issues? What, how long? Uh, that was like four years ago. So the best content you'll make is you talking to you four years ago. Mm. So go back to the TJ from four years ago. Uh, Probably doesn't want to spend a lot of time on Instagram. Probably is not liking his life a whole bunch. But imagine that for whatever reason, somebody showed the you of four years ago, this Instagram page, and they look at one post. That post has to speak to you has to move mm-hmm. you that becomes the benchmark that's what you're striving for right mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. something that you know i an evan carmichael post wouldn't reach you i'm coming in at a different level it's just not it's not going to be at the right zone for you because i never dealt with mental um health issues so like i can't share my story around because i don't have one but you do and there's mm-hmm. lots of people who currently are like the you of four years ago. And you can reach them in a way that nobody else can reach them. But you have to kind of put yourself back into who you used to be. And listen, you're still not done. You're still going to keep growing. You still got way more to do, right? You, I'm mm-hmm. not done growing. Nobody's Tony, Dean, nobody. But you've learned a lot compared to where you used to be four years ago, right? Mm-hmm. So you can go back and help that guy who you used to be four years ago. Mm-hmm. That's what you need to post. And whether it's a video message, whether it's a, a inspirational quote, whether it's a, a, a picture, a video, whatever, it's got to be something that if you happen to see it four years ago when you're at your worst of your worst, that it would pull you out of it and make you feel like maybe there's some hope. You know, like maybe, maybe this doesn't have to be my life. That yeah. becomes the asset test. So, like, would, would the you of four years ago subscribe to the Instagram page that you're creating? Mm. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. And one more question, because uh, I know so many people want to talk to you. Um, what what tips do you have for for networking? Like, um, being for you, um, you're obviously now in the circles of you know people that you probably at one point looked up to, but between between now and, yeah you know <laughs> you know and and I'm, I'm i'm an introvert like you are so it's a yeah. bit it's very hard for me to network what what 
and networking tips do you have for introverts? So I think it starts with figuring out what is a skill set that you have that can be valuable to other people, a skill set or knowledge set that you have that's valuable to other people. So I got started on my path of making YouTube videos, and then I became pretty good at YouTube. And then I started featuring people who I looked up to. And then I ended up doing doing partner kind of deals with them to use their content, right? So Tony was the first big one that we did. Um, and we've been working with his team for four years or something. Um, and then that, you know, Tony led to another person, led to another person, led to, led to Dean, led to, led to Brendan, led to tons of different people that over the years I've worked with. Um, that then leads me to being... Uh, I give tips. I give even today. So like while I'm while I'm backstage uh, sitting down while people are on stage presenting, I'm backstage and I'm looking at the YouTube channels of Robin Sharma and Dave Hollis and Lewis Howes. And I don't know, like there's, there's 10 people who I looked at today who I just sent a, a DM to on Instagram or an email to and gave them feedback. I, I, re, I took Robin Sharma's thumbnail and redesigned it and said, if you do your thumbnail like this, it'll perform better. Mm. Same thing for, for Dave Hollis. Um, looked at his most recent thumbnail and said, this is not performing. I know this is, I don't, I, I haven't seen your data, but I know the thumbnail is not performing well. Make it like this. And I redesigned his thumbnail and said, just value, right? And mm -hmm. I'm not getting paid to do that, um, but it, it leads to things, right? It leads to, that's how I got invited to Brendan's event last year to speak. And then they liked me. So they brought me back this year to speak. And now they want me to go to their mastermind to plan the next decade next week. Um, mm -hmm. So it's what's the skill that you can bring the people that you want to connect with that is valuable to them. A lot of what I do is talk about belief, right? That's my one word. It's all the content that I make, but uh, it's also similar content to what, Brendan and Dean and Tony teach, right? I'm not going up to Tony and saying, Tony, you need to believe in yourself more. <laughs> I'm not, maybe I haven't, I haven't got the courage to do that yet. Um, but, but, but um, Tony, I can, I can fix your YouTube channel. Easy, like a hundred percent, no doubt in my mind. Uh, so what's the skill set? Think of the people who you want to be connecting to and what's the skill set that uh, you can bring them that would make them make you interesting to them. Right. Uh, and then in general, so I, I hate networking events. It gives me anxiety. Uh, I, can relate. Mm -hmm. I went to, so I was Whistler. I was in Whistler two weeks ago. I don't know if you were on the lodge or anything when you saw that, but yeah, um, I saw that. Ed Milet and Andy Frisella you know, invited me to Whistler to speak at their event. And I had David Goggins before me and then me and then Peyton Manning after me. And that was the lineup. It's like, I got to speak in between David Goggins and David Goggins yeah. is like the most intense human on the planet. And then yeah. Peyton Manning is like greatest quarterback of all time. And I'm in the middle of all that. It's like, holy Christ. Anyway, on the first day, there's a networking event, which I hate. I hate, like just causes me anxiety. Um, and it was meet in the lobby, but then they, they got a bus to take you somewhere else, which freaks me out because in my head is like, how do I get home? Like what if I hate it and I'm dying, how do I get home? And there's no, there's no exit plan. It's not like it's mm -hmm. in the hotel that you can just go to your room and excuse yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to get on the bus with everybody and you got to go home on the bus with everybody. So if yep. I'm there for four hours, I got to be there for four hours, potentially four hours, suffering, yeah. right? So like I'm pan panic attack, freaking out in my head. Um, what I love doing, how, how I get through it is I try to be the expert. So if I'm at an event, I never go to any event that I'm not speaking at. So when I'm here and I don't talk to anybody, and at the end of my presentation, I said, I will never come and talk to you but please come and talk to me and I'll try to help you with whatever you're going through because I love it. We love serving. And if somebody has a mental illness and they're coming to you and they're trying to deal with it, you would love to help them, but you may yeah. not go up to them and say, Hey, I can help you. So you have to create the scenario where they want to come and talk to you. 
So if you're going to an event, you're not just going to network, but you're going to share something. You're speaking, you're telling your story, you're sharing a skill set, you're sharing a knowledge set, you're the expert. And then afterwards, people come up to you and they tell you their story and their problems and then you help. Mm. So here mm. yesterday on day one, um, day one was two days ago. And some people knew me and said hi and whatever. Day two, I spoke. And then today, day three, everybody's coming up and saying hi and like, asking quite because they saw me speak. And they may know mm. my channel or whatever, but they saw me speak. Um, so that's how I deal with it. I try to be brought in as even if you're not getting paid, just say you have a story to tell. You look at a an event that's coming up, start something local and just offer to speak for free in a place that you would have loved to network anyway. Mm -hmm. And try to speak as soon as possible. Like I hate speaking on the last day because then nobody finds out about you. Or if you speak on the yeah. first day, then you've got like mm -hmm. another day or two days of people coming up to you in the hallway. And then all you have to do is hang out in the hallway. And if you did a decent job on stage, people will come and say, oh, I loved your speech, but I have a question. How do I boom, boom, boom? And you love answering the questions because you love serving. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I really cool, appreciate man. it, Evan. That's what I got. Good luck and, and happy All morning right. to you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> much love. <laughs> If you have a podcast or interview show and want me to be a guest on it, I have two options for you. There's a link right there next to me. Go click it and I look forward to being a guest on your show.